Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We give him praise today. We thank God for another chance to be on the prophet's corner. I don't know where this shadow is coming from at the bottom, but I believe that you can hear me. Okay. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're back on the prophet's corner, and we come to you at 1 o'clock on Saturdays as the Lord leads, and we're out on assignment for the king. As we said before, it's a lot of things that we could be doing on Saturday, but Saturday, Saturday is the time when people have chores, and they have to, uh, to mow the lawn, they have to do their dishes. They have to wash the clothes and all of this. But we have to put the Lord first. God bless you, Prophetess Hollowell. I pray you can stay the whole time and share the live to Heaven Sent Creation Ministries that they may be watching there and, and women in power that they may watch it there. If you share the live video, I appreciate it. We're going to go into prayer, and we'll be uh, talking today about where your heart is. Where your heart is. Do you have idols that you don't even know that are in your life? Today, we're going to talk about those and discover how we can get rid of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go into prayer. Be praying for me. Pray for my voice that it would hold up. Hold up and that the listeners can hear not just what the Lord is saying, but they can hear what I'm saying. Amen. So I pray that my voice is coming through loud and clear. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another chance to be out here on the prophet's corner. And on the doorbell started ringing as soon as we were about to go on. So we know you have something to say to your people. I pray that you would bind the hand of the enemy. God, bind any confusion over the airways. God, let your word go forth as you intended it to go forth. You called me out here. Now, here I am. Now, you come out. Please come out with me. Let your Holy Spirit lead. And I believe, as my good friend Mother Prince says, don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. So we believe you're here. When you said where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst. So pray with me and pray for me. God bless you, uh, Minister Joy. As I asked uh, Prophetess Hollowell, please make sure that they're watching in Women in Power on Heaven Sent Creation Ministries. If you would share the live and let them watch it as well. Where your heart is, where your heart is, the, the desires of our heart, what we talk about daily, will show where our heart is. Are you talking about God daily? Are you talking about money? Are you talking about fame? What are you talking about? Because if you listen to your conversation when you talk to other people, they can tell where your love is because that's what you're going to be talking about. If you're with your girlfriend, you know, your friends that are girls, that's what we're talking about. Your friends that are female and you're constantly talking about a guy. They're going to instantly know that this is somebody that you revere highly. And after a while, they're going to say, you're in love with him, aren't you? Because you talk about him all the time. Have you ever met somebody and then the person that introduced you to says, they talk about you all the time. Well, that means that's where their heart is. Amen. And that's where your, your love is. And that's what you're going to put your sacrifice. That's what you're going to sacrifice. That's why the Lord 
allows us to give offerings because if you're, you love your money better than you love God and I'm getting ahead of myself and then that's where your heart will be. Money, money, money all the time. That's why a lot of times people ask God, ask you for tithes and offering because if your uh, heart is on the money more than it's on God and you put money first, the love of money is the root of all evil. I want you to pray with me for a while. Amen. You shall have no other gods before me. This is expressed in the Bible in Exodus 20 and 3. What is your God? What is your God? Just so I want you to take inventory. Of course, I had to take inventory when the Lord gave me this topic. And the, the topic is, subtopic is serving idols. Serving idols. And we can do it so easily without even thinking about it. Amen. So we're going to take an inventory today by the end of this uh, broadcast to see where our heart is. We talk about Jesus, but do we really love him? Amen. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. That's what he said. Amen. If you if you have a boyfriend or you have a husband, you don't want them spending time with other women. Well, that's what God is saying. You shall have no other God before you because I am the Lord your God. I created you. I made you in my image. Amen. So when we begin to act in strange, we know that we're all centered. We're not God centered because he made us in his image. Amen. What is an idol? It's anything set up to be worshipped in the place of God. It's a small g, O-D. A graven image is a carved idol, a representation of a God used as an object of worship. Amen. Who are you worshiping? Amen. Where is your time spent? Where is your energy spent? Amen. Is it taking the place of God? Hallelujah. Our scriptures today, First Thessalonians, the eight, the Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. For they, this Paul to the Thessalonians, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us? They tell us how you turn to God from idols. Amen. So they're being praised to serve the living and true God. There's only one. There's only one God. One God. True God. First Corinthians 10 and 7 says, Do not be idolaters as some of them are, were. And as is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. Amen. He's he not talking hopscotch and jump rope and, and marbles. He's not talking about this. They're talking about play, play sin, playing in evil, in the kingdom of evil. We, we have to pick a side. Amen. We're either with God or we're with the enemy. Amen. God bless you, Karen. Thank you for joining me. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10 and 14 says, Therefore, my dear friends, flee from adultery. What is adultery? It's the worship of someone. Uh oh, you mean I can worship somebody? Yes. The worship of someone or something other than God as though it were God. Oh, my God. The first of the biblical Ten Commandments prohibits Idolatry. Hello, Vita. God bless you. You shall have no other gods before me. First John 5 and 21 says, Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Hallelujah. 
Keep yourself. That's why we have to watch the company that we keep because the word of God says bad communication corrupt good manners. Amen. You, you all gung ho for God. God bless you, Aunt Carol. God bless you, Apostle Ingram. God bless you. Pray for me. Praise the Lord. But you start off fiery for the Lord. You start off on fire for the Lord, but you get with the wrong company. Amen. And when you buy apples, I like to buy fruit and put them on a, in a bowl. I have oranges. I have apples. I have lemons. And I put them in a nice, and bananas, and I put them in a nice fruit arrangement in my kitchen. I'm looking at them right now from here. Amen. But if those things begin to rot, those ones that are bad, I have to take them out and toss them because they'll corrupt the, the other ones. Amen. So we have to watch our communication because our communication with other people, especially if they're stronger will than you, they could lead you away from the path of God, away from the path of the straight and narrow. So the company that we keep is important. Amen. Therefore, he says in uh, 10 and 14, uh, 1 John, I'm sorry, 5 and 21, keep yourselves from idols. Keep your, That's how people become alcoholics. That's how people become drug addicts. You know, and I'm not looking down on them because there are a lot of addictions that you can have other than drugs and alcohol. Amen. But the love of these things and overtake them. The causes of having idols. We're talking about where is your heart today? Amen. Where you love what you love the most, that's what is going to consume you. Amen. So love the Lord. Flee. Adultery is what he says. Adol idolatry. Adultery is something else. We're not talking about that today. Amen. Colossians 3 and 5 says, Put to death, therefore, whatsoever belongs to your earthly nature. That's your flesh. That's your flesh. Amen. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Amen. You're greedy. You're covetous. You see your neighbor with something new, and you're envious of that one. Amen. That becomes an idol to you. I want to get even. I want to be keeping up with the Kardashians. Amen. And they're hard to keep up with. <laughs> Amen. But he said, don't be covetous of these things. Isaiah 45 and 20 says, gather together and come. Assemble, you fugitives from the nations. Ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood who pray to gods that cannot save. They're praying to God that can't save them. Amen. Uh, you, we, we, we go to different places and we see statues and we see people praying to statues. Those statues can't hear them and they definitely cannot clothe them. They can't give you food. Amen. So why are we bowing to these things? That can't help us when we get in trouble. Amen. They don't even have ears. They, they, well, they have stone and marble ears. But they can't even hear us when we call to them. You can kneel before a statue all day long. But that statue is not going to answer you. Amen. And we could even talk about this that story of Burr Rabbit. You remember that? <laughs> Tom Baby. That bro rabbit stopped and, and he wanted to, to talk to that, that tar baby. That tar baby. It was made out of tar. We know tar is sticky and black, just like sin. Amen. And sometimes we get distracted by things of tar. They are sticky. It looks good at the beginning. Nobody tells an alcoholic. Nobody tells a prostitute. A guy that's going after prostitutes, if you can get addicted to this stuff, it looks good at the beginning. It looks cool to teenagers to get high. Yes, it because you're cool. 
Now, you're fitting in with the crowd. And the enemy makes these things look so glamorous. You know, those celebrities come out, as we said last time, uh, one first time when I first came back out again, they have these chains, big old chains. They have the gold teeth. They have the earrings. All of these things are pure gold. And the teenagers look at these things. And they look at the big houses, the big mansions, the, the garages filled with cars, filled with all of these wonderful cars. And sometimes these celebrities, are, their lives are empty inside. Why do you think those millionaires are committing suicide? Because these things cannot satisfy them. Amen. The love of God will satisfy them. That's the void that they have in their heart. The Lord put that void in us because he created us in his image. Amen. But when these teenagers, they begin to look at these celebrities, Beyonce and, and, and all these other celebrities, you know, and they worship these people. They worship these people and the enemy uses them as idols. He loves them. All money is not from God. All blessings are not from God. The enemy blesses his people too. And he will bless them because he wants them to attract you. He puts something that's flashy in front of your eyes. He doesn't come with something that you hate. No, he does not. But he comes, the enemy studies you. He studies you. He knows the type of man that you like because he's listening to your conversation. When you and your friend are talking, and you're talking about, mm, child, oh, he is fine. He's fine as wine. So then if your heart is towards God, he's looking at that same man that you're looking at. And he's going to find one chocolate. Ah, yes. Mm. He's going to find one. Morris Chestnut, he's going to find one for you. Amen. But he is fine on the outside. Blair Underwood. Yes. But inside, he's trying to initiate you. He's calling you. Mm -hmm. And these lyrics that these people are singing, and he know that we love music. Music is a universal language. It can be translated into all different types of languages. Amen. So they can put you in a trance when you go to these concerts, concerts and they can, they can call on these gods that they're serving. Why do you think these, those eight children died when they went to that concert? I think it was about two or three years ago. Amen. They were doing ceremonial rituals. Amen. And you don't believe it. I can't help you if you don't believe me, but God sent me out here to warn, to warn, to warn, to warn. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. All that glitters is not gold. Amen. Go to God. Ask him to give you the, the first love. The first love that we started off with. When we start off with God, we have a zeal for God. We want to go to church every Sunday. We want to be at the altar. We want to pray night and day. We want to be in our word. But these things in this life, they have a way of trying to grab a hold of us. And if we don't watch, these things will grab a hold of us and they will become our idols. And we will have less and less of God. Less, of, less and less of God. Return to your first love. Amen. Where is your heart today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Gather together and assemble unto God. Amen. That's what Isaiah said. Jonah 2 and 8 says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Amen. And we saw that occasion in 1 Kings. Amen. The first Kings, when you get a chance, read it, start uh, first Kings about King Solomon. 
Amen. He asked the Lord. He had a love for God just like his father, King David. King David loved the Lord so much. He shouted now, and I was shouting up in here. And I never shouted out of my clothes, child. Mm -mm. I've never shouted out of my clothes. But David loved the Lord. He danced so far. He danced out of his clothes. Amen. And then that love for God, it, it's a, it shows the zeal for God. So King David had a love for God. Amen. And that even the mockers, let, look at him. The mockers will mock you and say, why are you going to church so much? Why are you praying so much? Don't you think Daniel had them? Daniel had mockers praying three times a day, a day. But King David was the father of King Solomon. But King Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. The Lord gave him wisdom and he gave him riches, didn't he? Amen. But first Kings 10 said, the Lord um, Solomon asked for wisdom of the Lord and God granted it to him. But he had a thing for foreign women. Mm. Oh my God. And they led his heart away from God to serve other gods. Astaroth the goddess of the Sidonians, Moloch, the detestable god of the Amorites. The Lord granted him what he asked him for. He gave it to him. He was the wisest king in Egypt. He was the richest king in all of Egypt. When Queen Sheba heard of him, she came and she, that joke, she, she gave him 120 talents. Y'all know 100 of gold. And then 120 talents of gold in today's world, translated to U.S. dollars, 225 million something dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he was able to decorate that temple and uh, for the Lord. Amen. But those, he began as those wives, as he got older, those wives led his heart away from God. And he began to serve in other gods. Amen. So the Lord eventually had to, took, the, took the kingdom. Amen. He didn't take it from him. But then real boom came. And he was listening to the, the young council instead of to the older people. He called in the older people. Why are you going to ask? What you ask me for? I'm a prophet of the most high God. Amen. And I'm not brass, bragging and boasting. But if you call and ask me. Something, if you call and ask my opinion, you ask me for wisdom and I give you what the Lord says and you don't do it. What's the point of you asking me? I could be doing something else in my time, eating popcorn. Y'all know I love popcorn and soda. I could be doing something else with my time. But Rehoboam, he asked of the prophet, the, the older men, the council, and then he turned around and he asked the younger council, those friends that were with him. And the younger ones told him to go up against these people. You know, it's a long story. Y'all know these chronicles. These things are, are, are complicated. I don't have all day. I don't have the voice to even say it. But then he went against the prophet, uh, those prophets, those advisors. And he ended up acting worse then Solomon, he has act worse than his daddy. Amen. But we, our point is, we have to keep our focus on God. We have to keep our heart toward God. All these idols, or these idols will come into our heart and they'll set up camp. Amen. And a demon is coming into your heart. He's not coming to have lunch with you. A demon, you open the door for a demon. He's coming in. He's bringing some friends with him. Yes, he is. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Innocent. God bless you. God bless you, Beverly Rhodes. God bless you. Amen. So types of idols. I'm on, let's, let's say Leviticus first and Psalm. Leviticus uh, 26 and 1 says, you, not, you shall not make idols for yourselves. Those people that are just coming in, we're talking about where your heart is. Serving idols. Mm -hmm. Oh my shia. Leviticus 26 and 1 says, You shall not make idols for yourselves or erect an image or pillar, and you shall not set up a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. 
He told us not to do it. Don't do that. Amen. Is it wrong to build a statue? No. Co commemorating those presidents. Is it Obama? All these people. Woodrow Wilson. Is it, is it a sin to build one? No, it's not. But it's a sin to pray to them things. It's a sin to pray to them. Okay. We've been warned. Amen. Psalm 135, 15 through 17 says, I'm sorry, y'all. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, but the work of human hands is the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. They can't talk. We said that right. They have eyes, but they don't see you. Those statues that people are praying to, they, they don't see them. You can stay there 15 hours. Those, those statues don't even see you. They don't love you because they have no emotions. That's so sad, isn't it? That's so sad. They have ears because hands made them. Hands made them. But they do not hear, nor is there any breath in their mouth. God bless you, Apostle Wallace. There is no breath in their mouths. So that these idol gods that we are worshiping, amen, the Lord is not pleased. The Lord is not pleased. Amen. Types of idols. And I'll be out of your way. I know you got other stuff to do today. God bless you. Thank you. Types of idols. Your children, your family can be an idol. Hey man, people work so hard. I gotta feed my family. I gotta feed my family. Yes, you do have to feed your family. Uh, and I saw, uh, Dr. Annetta Fulton. She put up a post. She said, God first. Then she said, say God first. And family was right in second. So your family can become an idol. Who you spending time with? Who you working for? Hey man. Money, the love of money. Is it okay to have money? All of y'all can raise your hand because you say, I got money in the bank. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But the love of money, he says, First Timothy 6 and 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. That's that seed. That seed. And we have to be careful where we get in these seeds from. Because a seed can make a tree. Hmm. A seed can make a whole tree. Which while some coveted after. We're still talking about money. They have erred from the faith. Error. They went in the error. And they pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Hmm. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Help us today. Statutes. The types of idols, Baal, Astod, Asherah, Shemosh, Dagon, Moloch, Tumas, all of these were statues. Mm. God help us today. Help us today. You don't have to erect a statue in your house to serve a statue, but there's an invisible statue that could come into your life and you begin to serve that thing more than God. That's why I, I see uh, Minister Janice and, and myself, uh, Dr. Pearson, I know because these are people I associate with. We take ourselves away from social media for a period of time. When you go on a fast, when you go on a fast be before the Lord, the Lord will tell you, shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut down Facebook. Shut down social media. Get off the Instagram. Hey Amen. Get off of TikTok. All of these things. These things are good in their places. But they can become statues in our house. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. What else can be an idol? What else? Yuri. Yuri. When it's connected to a strange God, obviously it's not a God. 
you're just trying to look a little cuter. Nothing wrong with that. But when it's connected to a strange God, Ezekiel 16 and 17 says, you also took the fine jury I gave you. I thought that's God. The jewelry made of gold and silver. Who gave them the gold and silver? God did it. And you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us today. Help us today. Help us today. Help us today. You know, I've seen a, a, a minister, a Joy, was talking about deliverance ministries and I to ministry and I told her that I eat sleep and drink deliverance ministry. I love to watch them, especially those guys in Africa, those those prophets in Africa, you know. And they told her to tell that spirit come out. They said come out. And those spirits come out. They said fire, fire, fire. And that thing comes out. And these people begin to Y'all, it, it might be a little disgusting. I hope you're not eating. But it, they began to throwing up. They, they began to spitting up because these demons come out in different ways. And uh, you know, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. They, they come in. They come in through these ways and they hide in different places in your body. So when these deliverance ministers are calling them out, they can see where that demon is lodged within them. I'm not going to get way off on that. I'm not going to get way off on that. But when they call them those things out, it's because sometimes these people set up Lord, I have to step a little bit in them. When they, 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 these spirits come in their dream. Some come from the water. Y'all know those marine, marine spirits. And they come in these people dream. These people are, are entertaining these things while they're sleeping. Oh my God, it can get so deep in here, guys. But we're not here to go deep. We're here to tell you about these idols. But they see these things in their sleep. The woman comes out of the water and give them stuff. Demons give them food in their dreams. And then now when these prophets are exercising these things, casting them out of them, they come out so many different ways. They come out yawning. They come out through your tears. You know, well, we, we, we're not in, uh, tread on minister. Joyce um, sermon because this is what she's going to be telling you about. I want to tune in Women in Power prayer line. I'll have it posted on Heaven Sent Creation Ministries and it's posted in the Women in Power International prayer lines. Amen. And she's talking about this on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to tread on there. Amen. Because then that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. What else can become an idol? Amen. We'll get back to those prophets. Our cars. Your cars. Celebrities collect them, don't they? Amen. They collect them. They wash them. They show them off. And all they talk about is the cars, more cars and more cars and more cars. And they trade them more than, than we can trade clothes. Amen. Houses. Big mansions. When you love them more than God, you, you, I don't know if y'all seen our movie, but it's this a movie, Rose Red by Stephen King. It came in 2002. And it was about this house that this man was making for his wife. And she would never say it. He kept building and building and building and building. And this thing became an idol. So whoever came to the house, it wouldn't let them out. Oh Lord, have mercy. The others, so houses, amen, y'all send up some hearts and likes and all this is what draw people. And so they can hear some of these things that we're talking about. Amen. This is not for the people already know, but send up some hearts and likes so the people who don't know can hear what God is saying. Amen. The others, that movie, amen. Those houses became idols to them. And your house can become an idol. You got to have the best 
uh, yard, your, your land's nothing wrong with having flowers and stuff, but you got to have the best of the best of the best. And, and I'll do everybody else. No, uh, uh, your education, your education can become an idol because you're so pompous now. The Lord allowed you to go get that degree, but now you're showing off. You're showing off. You're showing off with your degree. It went to your head. God gave you that degree in school administration. God gave you that PhD in school counseling. He gave you all of these things to help the body of Christ, to help his people, not to show off. Amen. Because the titles don't make us. We make the titles. Amen. So just remember, we go, we're go. we going after education. Nothing wrong with uh, having degrees. Amen. As my my uh, sister-in-law, Linda McClary, said, you have more degrees than a thermometer. Yes, we do. I do have a lot of degrees. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying this. I pray to my God. And, hmm, I pray to this God every day. I don't kneel to education. I'm sorry for those people that throw stones at you because you have a PhD. Amen. And you, you can go to school too. Go to school. Sometimes when you are in the, the pulpit, people throw shady stuff. You know, they think they're so smart. Well, no, God gave it to us and he will give it to you to go to him and ask him for that. But don't let that thing take over you once he give it to you. Amen. Self, self-absorbed, your own self has become an idol. And that's okay. Oh, my God. Let's check it out. You're always in the mirror taking pictures, buying clothes excessively, doing plastic uh, surgery. Nothing wrong with, with having plastics. Oh, okay. I'm not going to tell you that. You talk to God about that. Amen. But you know, if something is extreme on you, I, I you got a wart, a, a mole, a blah blah. I don't see anything wrong with that. But then you you want to be poom pow pow. <laughs> you want to be all that to attract the people, and then go on Instagram and and then show it off every day. And you you're taking a thousand pictures a day. That means you absorb with your self image. You absorb with yourself. You know I'm laughing, but this is serious business. Amen. Yourself, did you know that yourself can be your idol? Where your heart is. Where is your heart? Amen. Go up in that mirror and look the best that you can. Put it on. Take it off. Whatever you want to do. But just don't let it go to your head. Don't let it come before our God. Amen. Your job you can work so hard with no time for church of God. No time to spend with those people that the Lord gave you. No time for your family. Amen. And guess what? Your folks going to leave you. Mm -mm. I'm not even opening that book. Fame. The desire to be famous at all cost. Amen. Power. You will do anything to take over. Anything to take over, sabotage other people on the job. You ever went on a job and people were intimidated by your education? We, I'm coming all the way live. I'm just I'm telling you what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through, but people become intimidated just by you coming. They don't even that you just say you show up because the Holy Ghost show up. Your entourage of angels come and they see all this power coming, and it's not you. But they're looking at they're looking at you, and all this light is coming from God. And some people become intimidated on your job. Amen. So then you wondering where are all these attacks coming from? I'm smiling at the people. I'm praying for them. I'm counseling with them. Where are all these attacks coming from? But it's the aura, it's the light of God that's in you. Amen. And it's internal power that comes from God. And somebody said, light attracts bugs. Light attracts attacks. 
Amen. So it's not you. But when you show up on your job, you carry the light of God. When you show up in different arenas, you carry the light of God. And somebody may be threatened by the light that you carry, unfortunately. Amen. But when they begin to attack you because of that light, you don't come down. You don't dim your light. No, you pray for the people. You And you stay. You stay right there. And you shine for Jesus because God sent you out there on a, and an assignment. He sent you out on those jobs for an assignment. And when you go out on the job for an assignment from Jesus, attacks are going to come. Amen. But then the, the power that God gives us, it's not for us to go. When, when the Lord gives us a, a word of prophecy, it's not for us to go and, and, and try to impress people with these things. They become idle now. You know, we go and fast and pray for the anointing, for the Spirit of God to give us clarity when we speak to people. Because when you're prophesying to somebody, you're telling them what you've seen in their past, what's going on in their present, the word of wisdom, amen, and what's coming, I mean, the knowledge, and then what's coming in the future, that word of wisdom. Amen. So when God gives us these anointings to see these things in people, it's not to go to our head as prophets. It's not to go to our head when the Lord tells you to tell such and such. You know, you live at such and such a place. You're wearing this color underwear. You you can call my phone number to social security, all of this. Amen. But that power is not to be idolized. Is for the glory of God. Uh Uh-oh, prophets. Uh Uh-oh. When the Lord entrusts us with power such as this, he's given us the secrets. He's telling us his secrets. He's not for us us to abuse these things. And then we become so powerful that we are more powerful powerful than God now. No. Amen. So we have to harness our spirit. He said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Amen. I had a prophet to give to the people at the conference. But Dr. Fulton is over me. She is the seer. She is the visionary for women in power. Y'all see the shirt. It says president. But there's a CEO that's over me. So if she comes to me with a vision that the Lord gives her, because the Lord, she, she is the visionary. So if the Lord gives her a vision, I can say, well, I'm the prophet is Cunningham, and thus said the Lord, no, no. When she gives me an instruction, I carry out the instruction. Whether, you know, uh, and nine times out of ten, it's a good thing. But when you are in the seat that the Lord put you in, he trusts you with that power, but you can't let it go to your head. You can't let it go to your head and to talk about me. Yes, she thinks she's Dr. Fulton. No, I don't think I'm Dr. Fulton. We don't look alike. No. But what I'm doing, I'm doing what she asked me to do. I asked, I'm doing what night and day when some of y'all sleeping, I'm doing. What the Lord, what she asked me to do, because guess what? I'm not working for Dr. Fulton. I'm working for the Lord. Amen. So when you, you ask for all that power, you going up there, but you follow us home. You follow us home and you see what we have to go through. Amen. Prophet, Apostle Innocent, he's on the air all the way from Abuja, Africa. But when the Lord entrusts us with these prophetic gifts, we have to be careful these things don't go to our head and we can become idolizing these things. No, these gifts are not to play with. They're not ours. We didn't give them to ourselves, but God gave them to us for a reason. I'm, I'm going to come on down because I can go on and on as I feel my help. But I know you got places to go and we're usually done by now. We went a little long today. And one one last thing, celebrities or other people out front, your pastor, your leader, your boss, don't let them become your idols. Amen. The Lord sent you 
But then we have mothers in the church, but they can't be your idols. We have pastors in the church, but they can't become your idols. They can't become your idols. Amen. You go to your pastor because you honor him. Amen. And nine, nine times out of ten, when you go to the pastor, the pastor has already seen what you're coming to tell him. He's already seen it. Amen. I went to my daddy and told him, the Lord asked me to minister. But you know, I've been seeing fish. I've been seeing goldfish. And I tell y'all this many times on the prophet's corner. I've been seeing goldfish that I feed, feed. And, and I didn't know what it, what it meant. So I asked my daddy. My daddy was very insightful. Amen. And we were coming. We were coming from church. And we walked to church because I could see the church from our house, from our back porch. Uh, we were walking uh, a different route coming back home. And I said to daddy, I said, daddy, I'm always dreaming of fish and I'm feeding the fish. And he told me those are souls. Those are souls. So when, you know, I didn't have to go to my daddy. The Lord called me, but I did be out of honor and reverence for him. But if my daddy had said to me, no, I think you need to sit down. I think, I think you need to wait. And then I had to wait. I have to wait because they see and they watch for our souls. But we are not to idolize those people that have rule over us. God gave them to us for a reason, to lead and guide us, but for us not to worship them. I pray that you got something out of this teaching today. Amen. Where your heart is, serving idols, we have to be careful. Sinners have to be careful. Amen. And saints have to be careful. Amen. We have the love of God, but we have to be careful that we don't allow these things to take over. God bless you, uh, Brother Bush. Thank you for stopping in and watch the replay. God bless you. <clears throat> We're going to say a prayer and then we'll be done for today. But I want you to continue to pray for us. Continue to pray that we do the will of God, because some of these things that we say unto you, it's not an easy thing because it makes you, it makes me take inventory. And the Lord didn't tell us to come out here to be loved. Amen. He didn't tell us to come out here to win friends. Amen. But he said, he that winneth what? Souls is wise. God bless you, Dr. Fulton. Thank you for joining me too. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say our prayer and we're going to be done for today. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for those that gathered to hear what you had to say about where the heart is. God, there was another sermon that was on my heart as well, but that one will be for another time. We pray that it won't expire and we know your word doesn't expire because it's today. Yes, yesterday and forevermore. Thank you for your servants that took their precious time, your time that you gave them, and they no donated some time to this ministry, the prophet's corner, and they were attentive to what you had to say. I pray that they will share this live. If there's anything in our hearts, you said the husbandmen must be first part takers of the fruit. If there's anything in our heart, Lord, anything that have become an idol's, Please, Jesus, take it out. Show it to us, Father, and take it out of our heart that we can win men and we won't serve in your kitchen with unclean hands. God bless you today and heaven smile on you next uh, week at uh, one o'clock. If the Lord says uh, we will be back on the prophet's corner. Meanwhile, continue to pray for me. Share the live to your friends and family. And uh, God bless you until we talk again. Thank you. Amen. Love you. Amen.